Hello, human-shaped friends. We are back with another boo skull. <laughs> um, yeah, that's that's what I'm painting here. It was nice. This one actually did not take uh, as long as some of my other ones do. Uh, probably because size-wise, I only have so many teeny tiny brushes. And I swear there are times when they are not teeny tiny enough. <laughs> Um, but yeah, no, um, as with most of the horned animals I like painting, I focus more on the horns. <laughs> I think horns are pretty and fascinating, and I wish I understood how and why they grow. You know, like, I understand a lot of it has to do with, you know, evolution and defense and offense and, and all those good things within the animal kingdom, but, you know... Mm -hmm. Some animals have them and some animals don't. And some of them don't personally make a lot of sense. Like like giraffes. Giraffes technically have like the little like horns. I don't understand their purpose. You know? Uh, this is a, I want to say kuzu. They're gorgeous. They're huge. They, I feel like they would be cumbersome. Honestly. You know? The neck muscles that would be required to to properly aim even like that just that feels like a lot it feels like a lot for a very small animal well they're not like very small they're not moose moose are moose are terrifying um <laughs> like just they, they, they just are I'm, I'm a big believer if you see a moose no you don't no you don't you're you're gonna leave that moose alone um you're gonna apologize profusely for everything because that moose is a you know prehistoric animal and it will it will show you how it survived but moose are also really cute not to get too dark uh <laughs> sorry don't know quite where the ramble is going today uh but yeah teeny tiny brushes yes um I don't have a great way of saying this, but teeny tiny brushes have an expiration date. They just do. Um, you can care for them in certain ways to elongate their usefulness. But if you are like me and you're a bit neurospicy, um, it can be really hard to do those things sometimes. <laughs> Best way to ruin a teeny tiny paintbrush is to leave it in your water cup. The pressure of the handle will crush your teeny tiny bristles and make them splay and there are things you can do uh, to help reform them but in my personal opinion they they never go back to being quite what they were. Um, you can steam the bristles and then use some warm uh, sugar water to reform. Those are, those are things you can do, but I don't... Doing that on larger round brushes, I've seen that work. The, the sugar dissolves very quickly and it's really just to, to help it keep its form while the bristles re-remember what way they're supposed to go. But on the smaller brushes, uh, that just, it's never truly worked, you know, at least not for me personally. Um, just like you can, you can use your own saliva, which has a very similar practice, but not a lot of people like that idea, which, which I understand. Um, there are different, you know, waxes you can use, but in my most humble of opinion, when you have, when you have hit the end of a detail brush, the amount of energy you have to exert to to get it to be useful again is, is often not worth it. It's just not the popularization.
popular popularized I can say this word, I promise. The popularization of painting, especially uh, because of the pandemic and people are home, has made a lot of supplies a lot more affordable. Um, detail brushes. Brushes in general are just an intensely personal thing. And... Finding the ones that will work best for you will be a trial and error. I have found brushes that I love and brands that I love and others that I am immensely disappointed in. But when it comes to detail brushes, making sure that when you start using it, those bristles already aren't bent is very important. Anyway, that's that's what I have to say. Um... Thanks for, for watching. I hope you like my blue skull. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.